Any other questions? Yes. So I guess uh, San Mateo doesn't refer to um, Ricci then. <laughs> I love that. San Mateo. Well, there are lots of San Mateo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Same, well, you know, the apostle, but yeah. Sure. Any other questions? Yeah. There were, there were other methods. I mean, Mateo, Richie, he kind of, like you said, uh, he approached the scholarly class. Mm -hmm. But there were other efforts in China, religious communities that kind of went out into the province and established small religious communities among the the lower caste members and built the kind of the rural church that wasn't that ever yeah. successful also. So Ricci, his point of view was that unless we get sanctioned, the church can't grow. So he was very interested in getting imperial sanction. Ricci never thought that that was it. We convert the leaders and that's all. That wasn't his point. His point was we need sanction. An emperor can order a persecution of the church all over China, and did, and the Catholics would be massacred. So Ricci understood that he needed sanctions, so that was, that was his position. What people don't know is that the, the sort of work in the provinces, the work in more rural settings, that was also done by Jesuits at his order. So even after he died, for example, Giulio Eleni, Jules Eleni, his work was in the, among the poor. And his writings were less scientific. They were all liturgical books and devotional books and theological books. So the Jesuit, if you, if you were to sort of have a meter or a, a, bar, a, a, a pie chart maybe, the, the elite mission of the Jesuits is small. It's really among the popular people that the Jesuits did most of their work. And most people don't seem to realize that. The Jesuits were very interested in the poor. And most of their conversions were among the poor. And I think that's still the case today. So when the Dominicans said, you Jesuits, you're just hanging out with the, with the emperor, that wasn't true. Most of the Jesuits weren't in the Forbidden City. And there are time and time again where there were officials who would write a memorial to the emperor that would ask for a persecution of Catholics with the Dominicans and the Franciscans there. And it would have probably been signed had the Jesuits not been in the Forbidden City painting a portrait of the emperor like Giuseppe Castiglione, and say, well, Emperor, no, don't regard this. Okay, fine. So, in a sense, the Jesuits saved the Dominicans and the Franciscans more than I think historically people want to admit. So, maybe that answers the question. Most of their work really was among the poor and non-elite. I think, I, I think with uh, all maybe the focus that will be brought on, because of Matteo Ricci, this jubilee year, and maybe the advancement of his cause, I think uh, one of the blessings will be probably what he would have wanted because I think it will bring attention on the incredible witness of the church in China. I mean, it's just that these people have endured. He sent these seeds that he planted, you know, sustain this, this community. I mean, it's just an amazing witness. Yeah, let me end with one. The word martyr means witness. It's important. So we need to think about that. I mean, actually, by telling the story of martyrs, you're making them martyrs. Because how do they witness unless you know about them? So, but let me end with this, and then we'll go to Mass, which is the best thing to do in, in life. Um, today, when you ask the Chinese, what can you do? Or what can we do outside of China? They say, we want to be known. We're Catholics, too. We love God, just like you in America, and the people in Europe, and the people in Africa, and the Philippines. So. I think what Ricci might be happiest about this moment, not so much that he's being remembered, but that the church in China is being discussed. The, the church in China feels forgotten by the rest of the world. And I think more than anything, I always hear them say, ask people to pray for us and to know that we're here. We are part of the church too. So I think that might be Ricci's biggest victory right now, 400 years after his death, is that I'm here now and we're talking about Catholics in China because there, there's more to Catholicism than um, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's also in, in Fuji, Zizi, Shan, Shan, Jirmi. There's, there's The church is bigger and, and, and China would love to be remembered. So anyway, God bless you and thank you.